so new project time this one's more for vince uh he's uh yeah we're gonna we're gonna get something going for vince so you can kind of guess what it is that is a 1979 cx 500 that's been converted halfway to a cafe racer and we're here with the owner will hey well so we don't know anything about it that's been tore apart a little bit and then we get to figure out what happened nice here we go Initial diagnosis is that that doesn't look too bad. So, uh, what's the story on this? Um, basically, bought it earlier this summer as a project to get me into motorcycles because I love cafe racers. But it was a little bit too much work for me as a first-time owner. Right on. So, so you bought it not running not at... starting as is uh, a little bit more stock than it is right now. So I started with like the stripping of some stock parts added like the pod filters started working on some like the older rustier parts to change out to something newer took off the stock headlight stock airbox i was starting to look into converting back to refinish it a bit nicer too yeah so all the parts are here so it's pretty seamless for you i guess um, <laughs> well, <laughs> yes yeah, so, so you got a manual so that really yeah, helps yeah that's actually pretty cool because i was looking at like pdfs online before but uh, the owner found it in his garage and gave okay. it to me afterwards. Oh, nice, was, uh, nice. Very life saving. Yeah, that's beautiful. So you had it turning over, but it didn't fire. Yeah. So, it didn't right. stay running. It's very loud. It's a uh, straight pipe, yeah. as you can yeah, tell. Yeah, so, yeah. depending so, on your neighbors. So, loud as in you did. It did fire for it you? It ran for about two seconds, so okay. some, my engine started to help. Yeah, my, my girlfriend came out running because she was, she was like run playing the whole house. <laughs> um, but yeah. Nice, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so uh, I love the style. I, I, I don't know, I don't think my wife's gonna be too keen on me getting my motorcycle license, but I, I think uh, this is a perfect project for Vince to show off his perfect welding skills. We'll, we'll clean up the back a little bit and uh, go from there. Okay, so I was 15 and I already owned three vehicles before I actually had my license. I was already swapping engines back then and putting multiple vehicles into one. And I owned a transport truck before I actually got my AZ license, but I ended up getting my AZ license. Now I have a motorcycle and I do not have my M1 license. And that's okay, um, because this was just too cool to pass up. This is a 1979 CX500 Honda, and this is the beginning of a cafe racer build. Now, this was the most customizable uh, bike to turn it into a cafe racer. And basically, a cafe racer is if you take an imaginary line from the front tire and the back tire, and an imaginary line across the top of the fuel tank, and you take that bike and you fit everything inside of that. You get rid of as much weight in the back as you can, and you make it heavy in the front like a bulldog with a nice aggressive stance. You tuck down nice and low by lowering the handlebars and you make bets as to how fast you can get going to a cafe or a bar. This was a big thing in the UK. You built a bike, you made it fast, you made it light and you put down 100 euro or what is, what does London have? Don't even know, $100. 100 pounds. Pounds. <laughs> <laughs> So you take a hundred pounds and you make a bet and say, I can go to Joe's Pizza across town, grab a slice and be back before the end of this song. And there's a whole culture that went around that. And there's no shortage of cafe racers, but I love it as an art piece or something to, to, to just really take and make it your own. And then maybe put it in the back of a pickup truck or we'll go cruising around. Um, not as something uh, as a daily, but something really, really neat. And that's where we like grabbing these projects because I don't like sourcing parts. I don't like trying to find things. I just want to build stuff. So we've got, we've got a box of new parts that we're going to install on it. Basically the air filter has already been removed and the battery, which, which would be encased in here, 
Now the handlebars have already been dropped, um, but uh, luckily they didn't get too far where they chopped the back half off of the bike and then only did this little piece of tin with a little LED strip. All of that's coming off. They dropped the handlebars down and I imagine this is a bot piece, but what we'd like to do is, is get rid of this top chunk because it's too close to the top of the tank. Drop that down a little bit and have the handlebars coming out straight. So they kind of end up in the same spot, but they don't have this, this moose antler type look. We'll clean up the wiring and then maybe go to a monoshock or whatever we feel like and, and really clean up this back end and, and get at it. So um, I'm excited about this one. Now this one's a lot for Vince as well. Vince loves motorcycles and I would never, my welds would never look good enough to um, be proud of this build if we did. Uh, we, can, we can make stuff and then grind it all afterwards, but having some TIG welding uh, exposed, I think would do a lot for this bike. But before we do any of that, we gotta get it running because Will never actually heard it run. So we're gonna take a look at the carbs and turn on the ignition. We got some keys somewhere and uh, see if we can fire this thing up. Here we go. Okay, so I was really excited about this cafe racer build because um, I had just the idea of it, right? But then Aaron came and said, it's not a cafe racer build because it's only 500 and ca all cafe racers are 750. Well, I had to break it to Aaron, but it's a 750 now. We don't need a seat. <laughs> anyway. All jokes aside, that is going to go into that with the twin turbo dual plenum Germac swap C10 tow truck because that needs nitrous more than this this bike does. But what this bike does need is to run, and the previous owner bought brand new or had carburetors completely rebuilt for this and they're all set and ready to go it comes with a new fuel line brand new fuel line so um told me it had spark and it had uh compression you had somebody come over and check compression so it's not that big of a deal to throw the carbs on and even though i should be working on that and that my biggest truck and my smallest truck um it's like 11 o'clock at night I'm on daddy duty and the kids are asleep. So I'm gonna throw these carbs on and turn the key on, which I'd left in the house and then see if I can fire this thing up. So we'll start by pulling this apart off and then basically I'm just gonna blow this out clean with the uh, some shop air and then um, throw it on and see if it runs. Here we go. <laughs> So looking at the carb, I just pulled the bowl off of the one just to take a quick peek, but um, I don't think I'm gonna just pop the carb down and fire this thing up because everything looks pretty good in here. So unless somebody's blocked off a port somewhere, put the screw too tight so that they're not getting fuel, um, probably wasn't the issue. <laughs> so we'll, we'll still throw those other carbs on. I just gotta compare them and make sure that they are the right ones. I, I, th I think they are. We can just put the linkages on and then go. Um, but I'm thinking that there's probably something else going on here. But I'm gonna cross my fingers. If that's the case, I'm not gonna work till two in the morning to try and get this thing started, but we'll throw those carbs on and we'll see. But my, my initial diagnosis is that that doesn't look too bad. Anyway, throw those on and cross our fingers. Charge up the battery, give her some snot. I don't think he's done anything to the wiring. I think he just like unhooked everything. So we'll see if, um, I don't know if any of this needs grounds to be like hooked up. Maybe I'll, I'll bolt, some, bolt that back down to something just so that we have a ground. And then just have battery positive. It'll be fine. I think I can get it. Here we go. Okay, so when I started here, I put the fuel on, it just pours out 
Let's hope we didn't pay too, too much for these rebuilds because, um, look at that. It's like a fountain. Right out of the seal. Right there. <laughs> so I gotta take it back off again. <laughs> it's coming out right there. So it's your main feed going in. Luckily, he also bought a rebuild kit for this and then didn't use it and ended up just buying rebuilt carbs. So I can take the rebuild kit and put it in the rebuilt carbs and try to stop that leak. And then we can probably get it going. But by now it's past midnight. I'm not gonna do that right now because it will be two in the morning. So we're gonna disconnect this fuel, take the fuel tank off, make sure that we're not leaking fuel. And then wipe that up, throw that rag outside and call it a night. <laughs> That's disappointing. Didn't even get to hear it turn over. Actually, it would probably fire just with the car fuel that's in the bowls. Maybe we'll, I'll take the fuel tank off. Go grab the keys, see if it'll at least fire. We'll do that. Yes, that's a plan. All right, I'll be right back. So this wire was plugged into the wrong thing and that burnt up my coil, that's what the smoke was. So I'm sure this coil is shot, nice. Let's see if we got spark on the other side. <laughs> Exciting times. <laughs> the fire extinguisher was right there. I think we got a healthy spark on this side. Kind of a regular pressure tester handy. I think maybe, maybe no. Not handy. Somewhere. Shoot. See if I still got spark on the other side. I doubt it. I let smoke out. That's bad. Don't let smoke out of here. Sorry, I expected that. Let's we'll order one of those in. Made in Japan. Swap these two wires around. I might do it in a waste spark too, so then they both go at the same time because that was firing more quick, quicker than it was turning over. So that's probably not it. Nothing. It's nothing. Nothing at all. I got a little bit of gas in the squirt bottle. Crank it over, spray a little bit in there. See if it'll at least fire on that. Um, don't try this at home. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Well, that's a good night. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. I didn't burn that other plug out. It would have it running on both cylinders. So it's obviously fuel related. I don't know whether I'm going to rebuild the old carbs or rebuild this one. Obviously there's a big issue there, but it's running. I can go to sleep. <laughs> Uh, that battery, he bought a new battery for it, it's already shot. I had it on the charger, trickle charger for um, a day. 
at two amps, should have been fine. It had zero volts. The old battery, maybe I put the wrong battery in, but that one looks new. That one looks old. That one's got five volts in it. So maybe I'll put that one on the trickle charger during the day tomorrow. And then, uh, sweet. That's exciting. I got a running motorcycle. Awesome. Here we go. Okay, so I was gonna rebuild these cards, and then that screw, this was the older ones, the ones that came on it, and that screw was stripped. So then I took these off, and I'm gonna rebuild these real quick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it that he did know what they were doing, and just forgot the seals in here. That's what I'm gonna go by. So I'm just gonna take it apart, replace the seals in here. Hopefully I don't have to take too much apart, and then um, put it back on again and see if it'll run continuously. Here we go. So this is how it came apart. You can see there is no O-ring on the crossover tube. There is on that one, just not on this one, or on that one. <laughs> so that would leak and burn your garage down. So uh, I, I don't know if I can trust what's going on in here. We'll put this back together again because it only takes a second, but man oh man. Just some questionable decisions going on here. Here we go. Okay, so another little issue I see is, see though, there's a gap on that throttle plate and there's none on that plate. Well, that's because this linkage here is bent. I didn't do that, but this one is straight. Now, I want to use this because I don't think it ever had fuel go through it, whereas this one's probably all gummed up from sitting. So, I'm going to take the linkage out of this one and pop it in here, and that will be the final straw. Then I'm going to throw it on. Um, when the linkages are moving freely. Uh, I'm going to throw it on, see if it'll run. If not, I'm totally rebuilding this one. So, and here are these little needles. Well, I think they shut the fuel off. These ones were closed. These ones had two different kinds in there. This was the original where you could grab it with your fingers and spin it. And the other one was from the rebuild kit with a broken tip. Now that tip is jammed inside the housing here. But, so I said I was going to rebuild these ones because I was sick of, I, I can't trust anything that this guy, whoever rebuilt it, did on this. It was probably a Friday afternoon build. Problem is that I believe these carbs are better because they've got a secondary pump. So if you see that, that is not on this one here. So an extra crossover tube and an extra little sprayer in there for that extra little bit of fuel for when you smash the throttle, it'll spray that extra little bit of fuel in there so it doesn't lag. So I do want to rebuild these. I got to get that pin out though. I got, that's blocking my fuel. So um, I'll try and knock that pin out and then use the best parts from both of these and put them together. But I'm going to have to use the linkage off the one, um, get the, and the needles out of that one, put it into this one, leave the secondaries and hope that they actually, anyway. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so this is your main jets that suck the fuel up. Uh, there's two of them, not sure why there's two, but they both have to be clear and they have to be open. So this is like your main jet, it's got some holes in there. You wanna be able to see through that, see some light through that. Look at that, you can see some light. Um, and then this one <laughs> is jammed right in there. Uh, the entire, you're, la you're supposed to put your screwdriver in there and be able to turn that out. And that is completely stripped and in there and jammed in there, broken, gone forever. Um, I cannot get that out. So the only thing I can do is um, get a piece of wire or get a drill bit that size and drill through, make sure that that opening is open. Then I can leave it in there. It's not 
as, as long as it's open, it's doing its job, but that thing is so mangled in there, I can't get it out. Um, it's just, uh, it's all bad. Uh, whatever he paid for this, it was way too much. Way too much. Because what happens, I, I, so I, I do enjoy this, I just shake my head at when, when you leave, you let something go out the door this way. That carb will never have ran, ever. It would have always ran on one cylinder. That carb is okay, that not so much. Although the housing is different for my secondaries, I still want to use these, but it's all. Anyway, here we go. Uh, you can you can blow gun through there too, but there was a chunk of crap in there. So that's clean. Poked a piece of crap out of there. It, sh it should work. I think I can put it back together. Put all the new pieces in there. It, like it was clean, it's just butchered. So, here we go. So the, the jets that they put in are different size jets. Um, one hole is a lot bigger than the other. So I guess he wanted like 30 horsepower to the one side and 38 horsepower to the other side. Or maybe, he, maybe it was pulling to the right and he needed a little bit more power on the left side. I'm not sure what his thinking was, something along those lines, but none of the parts match. So, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so funny. <laughs> no, I don't know. Okay, so these bores are actually different, so I can't switch the plates around or the rods around, but I did bend the plate properly, so now both of these close at the same time. So that should be good. Choke is all set up, so that works properly. And everything's got seals and gaskets back in it. Should work. Yeah, should throw it on and see what happens. Before we do that, we'll just throw the fuel tank on there and make sure that nothing pours out. And then we'll throw it on the bike. Crank her over, battery has been charging for a day and it's been holding at whatever I stopped charging it at. Five and then seven and nine every couple hours. I think we're up to 12 volts now. So that should be better than the one that's in there. Anyway, here we go. No leaks, awesome, except right out of the tank, that's fine. I'll pop that off. Make sure that we've got fuel coming out of here and here when we crack those open. We've got fuel in that bowl, that bowl, nice. It should go vroom vroom. It's funny how much better your hands work at 11 in the morning rather than 2, two in the morning. Um, so we got uh, throttle, you see that moving. And we got choke, nice and free, so as long as the gas doesn't leak, we'll throw that other battery in it and uh, crank her over. Here we go. So I'm going to run on one cylinder because I wrecked the one coil but uh, the coil is on its way, so we'll see what happens. too long because the other cylinder will suck fuel in and it won't burn it so it'll wash out that cylinder. But we are uh, not fired up without the choke. I 
those off. I gotta turn the idle up a hair. Yeah, but I'm gonna wait for the uh, other coil. Awesome sauce. It's not leaking. Yo, I gotta say, I love fuel injection. The Audi's all fuel injected and the, and the, uh, the Bronco. I love my diesels, but there is something to carburetors that it, the amount of engineering that went into that, as complicated as a carburetor is, it's simple enough. You can just take it apart and clean it, put it back the way it was, and it should work. Um, keep your eyes open, see things that aren't even. More than one carburetor is always tricky, but uh, I got a running motorcycle. Maybe, is Uncle Tony right? Is Uncle Tony right? Should I, should I pull all my fuel injection off and go back to carburetors? <laughs> How about we just use the best of everything? Here we go. Okay, um, honestly, I'm getting kind of sick of these batteries. Uh, they're big, they're heavy, and they don't work. So, um, there's a little ongoing joke with the F350 about me putting 12 volt uh, Milwaukee batteries underneath the seat, but I'm wondering, you know what? Maybe a Milwaukee battery is enough to turn a motorcycle over. So, I'm gonna give it a shot. And if this works, I can hide the battery because this is a lot smaller than that. So I can probably stick that up underneath the seat somewhere. Maybe even so I can like plug it in, lift something up, plug it in, plug it back out again. I don't know. But I'm gonna give this a shot, see see if this works. Pair of vice grips, put the positive on there. Try not to touch anything and blow fuses and sparks, that's bad, but if this works, lights are on. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I'm just gonna be using Milwaukee batteries. Look how cute that is. We'll make sure that it's charging. I gotta read up and make sure that these can charge with an alternator. <laughs> I imagine. I don't know. Anyway, I, it was bugging me that another 150 bucks for a stupid battery that's way too big. Milwaukee, there we go. Okay, pretty excited about my new old stock um, coil that we got. Brand spanking new. It's even the right side. Um, so thanks to Hoogie for grabbing that. And remember, it's not NOS. It's new old stock. So um, we'll pop the end on there, swap the coil on there, and I'm excited to hear this thing run on two cylinders. Here we go. So this, you really just pull it off and shove it on. There is nothing else to it. Um, this is pretty neat. I can see why bikes are uh, great things to work on because everything's cheap. Like every part on this bike is super cheap. Rebo kit for the carbs is like 20 bucks. Um, rear shock is like 70 um, for a new brand new mono shock. Um, the coil was like 60 bucks, something like that. Um, like brake master cylinders are like 30 bucks, 40 bucks. It's uh, pretty neat to, I can see why people like building these things. Compare that to a transfer truck where everything is just insane. Makes this seem as expensive as a coffee.
checked out of resistance it's warm all the time. So the right exhaust is colder than the left. We'll have to investigate that, but it is running. So now we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do with it. Okay, so it's running. Uh, it sounds not too bad. The right exhaust is a little colder than the left exhaust. So something is going on there. We can swap the coils and see what's going on. Um, probably needs a valve set. Probably needs to be ran a little bit because it's probably been a while since it's gone down the road. So. Um, what we're gonna do with this thing? Um, what are we gonna do with this thing? Well, um, it actually all started because Hoogie said, you know what, we should build the Batmobile. Um, Hoogie is a big uh, comic book guy. <laughs> and it's funny because we're complete opposite people, but we get along so well. Uh, if you don't know, uh, Hoogie and I is my best friend that uh, I share the GTO with him, the 67 GTO. Um, and he said, you know what? Uh, he's a huge Batman fan. We should build a tumbler. We should build, you know what? We don't have that budget, but we do, we do have a budget for a bike. So I sent him a picture of this bike on, uh, on Marketplace and he's like, ah, it's the wrong one. Um, you need this year, uh, whatever. You need this model. And I said, you know, I don't know. I, I really like the look of it, so I bought it anyway. But uh, he gave me this and I don't know if I can um, take it out of the box because that's kind of a, a bad thing but if you look at it there's some there's some design flaws here the rad is sticking out on the side here i don't know what's going on it looks like the exhaust goes through the rad and then burns your knees and then points the exhaust out at your legs right at your foot peg there um it's got looks like it's got a v8 so i think there's like a lot of weight here and um i i think i think it's got some issues but uh so comment down below as to what you think uh we should do with this. Uh, I did buy a mono shock for it just off eBay. Um, this little guy, so we'll probably pull that spring off and paint that, it's the wrong color. And I got some nice uh, tiny little meters to hang off down the handlebars. We're gonna make our own handlebars so it's not this goofy thing. Um, uh, it looks like one of those bunnies that has the ear flopping off to the side. No good. Clean up the wiring, fix the frame and the shock. What I did do is order a seat, um, which has a little cover in the back and I can tuck most of this wiring underneath there and the Milwaukee battery underneath and that'll open up this whole thing down below. So I have some design ideas in my head, but um, the mufflers and the seat are gonna take like a month and a half before they're even here. They're, I don't know, they're back order or whatnot. So that's fine. We got it running. Um, we're gonna get Vince on some of the welding and you'll see this one probably after the new year when we have all the parts. We'll have another complete video on uh, what we're doing with it. So thanks for watching guys. Appreciate you guys watching. Um, the f 350s moving under its own power. So that video, um, if you haven't seen that, check that out. And we are on the C10 next. So this is our uh, twin turbo. C10 uh, Germax swapped dual plenum intake with uh, really nice interior and everything in it. Uh, so we just got to get this thing running and get this one ready for power tour. That's well I'm going to do the box. You got to change the fuel lines on it and uh, hook up the air ride properly and hook up the things like the brake and things like that. Um, so lots of little stuff to do. So stick around for that. Appreciate you guys watching. And like I always said, you never know what you're going to get. We've got transport trucks race cars, muscle cars, muscle trucks, lifted trucks, lowered trucks. Um, we got a tank and now we got a motorcycle. You never know what you're gonna get. If you're not filthy, you're not rich. Get out there and work on it. Here we go.